some x plus b and you my friends probably had a substitute today lots of new things i hope you're doing well this will be our last video in this class by me for some time most videos will be um videotaped uh videoed of your actual zoom meetings i believe with mr fry although he is figuring it out he's figuring out a lot of things as he goes this year so give him lots of patience hang in there and um here we go so this is our assignment i'm just leaving these full just remember um we've got this function right here we did this in our um in class already so you should know all about this we have our y and our x there are variables this right here is our constant as in it stands for a number like one or two or five or seven or three or two the negative one or whatever we're going to talk about whether that number is positive or negative negative. and if i graph it in a function what happens so here's what we notice if i have something like y equals uh, I'm going to erase this because it's just a little cruddy. All right. What if I have y equals two x? Well, what you'll notice is if you type that into say decimals like this, y equals oops, y equals two x. This is going to keep track of all the two pairs of numbers where y is twice as big as x. So if y is 2, x is 1. If x is 1, y is 2. That's right here. Um, whatever x is, y is twice as big because that's what this says. So it graphs those points, and look at that. It goes up and to the right. Up and to the right. That is a rising graph, up and to the right. However, if I have y equals negative 2x, guess what? That's going to go down and to the right. Now let's see what that looks like. Let's make that 2 into a negative. Oh my gosh, now x is twice as big as, sorry, y is twice as big as x, except it's also negative. So now we have, if x is 1, y is negative 2, twice as big as x, but negative. Here's if y, x is 2, y is 4. No matter what x is, the first number, y is twice as big, the second number, and it's negative. And that's why this goes down, because y keeps track of up and down, and up is positive, and down is negative. So this thing right here makes y be twice as big and negative, which means the line goes down, like so. That's important. If we have 0, well, here's what ends up happening if you have zero, just so you know. Zero x. Look at that. It's nothing. That's because x times zero is going to make zero. If x is one, one times zero is going to make zero. Two times zero, also going to make zero. It doesn't matter what I make x. This whole thing just becomes zero. Because no matter what x is, it just turns to zero because it multiplies by zero. So what I end up with is y equals 0. This is all the places where y is 0. So if you have a 0 for the slope, it just makes things flat. In fact, it makes this whole number disappear and turn to 0. Sometimes you'll have equations like y equals 3. That's actually y equals 0x plus 3. Right? But who wants to write 0x? 0x is just 0. It's nothing. So we just write y equals 3. So that's an interesting little tidbit. It doesn't really affect too much right now. Okay, bigger numbers means steeper. Numbers small, like between 0 and 1, like fractions and decimals, like 0.5, they're going to be less steep. You can see this right here. What if I say y? y equals mx. And now, if I make m be positive, look, the line gets steeper and steeper. The bigger I get it, closer to 10. If I make m really negative, it gets steeper and steeper, but if I make it in the middle, it's flat. Notice if it's close to zero, it's closer to a flat slope. In fact, the closer to zero things are, the flatter the slope. So um, since these numbers are close to zero, like 0 0.5 and 0 0.3 and 0 0.20, between zero and one, 
they're going to be less steep because they're small numbers. Whereas big numbers bigger than one, like two and three and four and five and 10 and 45, they're going to be super steep lines because they are lines that, um, that, uh, what? With slopes that are big. Another interesting thing that you might want to know is this. Y equals X is just Y equals one X. Because if you count them, that's one X, right? So we can write the one there, but it's kind of, nobody writes it. So notice these are bigger than one, which means a steeper slope than one X. These are smaller than one, which means a less steep slope than one X. So that's an interesting thing. I am going fast and I hope that this isn't too fast for you. Negative five, bigger than one. So it's gonna be pretty darn steep. It's definitely gonna be steeper than a slope of negative two. This slope is negative five. That slope is negative two. Which one's gonna be steeper? Negative five, because it's a bigger sized number. The magnitude of that number is bigger. We'll talk about that in a moment. We also have negative one and negative three. Well, negative three is the bigger number here, so negative one is going to be less steep than negative three, which leads us to a really important thing. Larger magnitude means steeper slope. Now, back in seventh grade, you learned things like negative three is less than, oops, I can't think very well, let's see, negative five is less than negative two. You learned that because you have a line here and zeros in the middle and you learned that numbers further to the left are smaller numbers further to the right are bigger so five is bigger than four is bigger than three is bigger than two and those are bigger than the negative numbers but here's the weird thing negative five negative two here's a negative two and that's negative five since negative two is further right it's a big a, a greater number you learned that in seventh grade and it confused a lot of you because you were like, wait, but five is a bigger number than two. And you were right. But what you were thinking about was not comparing numbers on a number line. You were thinking about magnitude. Magnitude is the word we use to describe how big a number is. So when we want to talk about magnitude of numbers, we put these cool signs around them. I'm talking fast about this. You can pause. We put these cool signs around them, which are called absolute values. Oops, parentheses, absolute values. And absolute values turn things to positive because absolute values are just talking about which number is bigger. And when I compare five and two, wait a second, that's wrong. Actually, five is bigger than two. Negative 5 is smaller than negative 2. 5 is bigger than 2. Whenever I put these things, these absolute values around a number, I'm asking about its magnitude, the size of the number. And the truth of the matter is the size of the number is what makes something steep, not whether it's positive or negative. Negative 5 is going to be steeper, and it's going to be going down than negative 2. Negative 1 is not going to be as steep as negative 3. But they're both going to go down because they're negative. But three is a larger number. It has a larger magnitude. So remember that. Bigger number, steeper slope. So I'll pick that. Bigger number, steeper slope. Okay, I have this written in because it's just a straightforward thing. Hopefully you did it. Okay, so we're going to compare these two lines, right? And we're saying, what are the slopes between parallel lines? And it's going to give us this rule. This is a very important rule. You'll remember this in geometry. They definitely will go over this in geometry, parallel and perpendicular lines and slopes. What we notice is... I look at these slopes. We have our slope y is equals mx. That's our slope. Y equals mx. That's our slope. Plus b. B is where the line crosses the x-axis. Okay, so this one crosses at 1. That one crosses at 0. 
but they're the same steepness. Why? Because this number is the same. Slope is steepness, and they have the same steepness. So what we notice is, here's an important rule. If you have any two lines ever, and they have the same slope, they'll be parallel, period. Okay? Forever and ever, amen. It never happens any other way. If I'm graphing lines on a graph like this, and they have this number the same y equals something x plus something, 3x plus 45, and 3x minus 22, as long as it's 3x on both of them, they'll be parallel. So you can see that right here. Let's just do one more. 2x plus y equals 2x minus 3. Oops. That again. y equals 2x minus 3. Look at that. They're parallel because the twos are the same. I will always make them parallel. The five and the three are these numbers. This one crosses at five. That one crosses at three. So this guy is where the graph crosses the y-axis. This guy is how steep the graph is. As long as I change this 12, sure. Now they're not parallel. If she's that one at 12, look at that. They're parallel again. This number right here, m in y equals mx plus b. M is always the line what you're going to look at to make sure that they're parallel. Okay, moving on to perpendicular. Perpendicular is a fancy word for lines that cross a, to make a right angle. So they like to make the corner of a book or the corner of a table or the angle that your wall makes with your floor. Perpendicular is just saying that two things are as opposite directions as they can get. Okay, one's going straight up and down, one's going straight horizontal. Or if one's going a little up, the other one's going down and steep, just so that they make that right angle. So think of the corner of your favorite book and think, that's a right angle. Okay. Um, okay, so a right angle. The other words we need to know are negative. Well, you know negative. Five, negative five and five are what we call additive opposites. And if I added a negative to a negative, that would turn it to a positive, right? And so that's an interesting thing. But that's what we're talking about when we say negative. Reciprocal is when I flip a fraction like one fifth and five, one, five over one, five firsts. These are called reciprocals. It's a fancy word. That's not what that word means anywhere else in the world. Reciprocal has lots of meanings. It's a really cool word. You'll use it sometimes in science and sometimes in humanities and it almost always means something slightly different in math it just means flipping the top and the bottom of a fraction that's it all right okay so why are we learning this let's talk about this so here's our rule i want two lines to make a perpendicular angle make a perfect right angle like the corner of your favorite cheer uh, a cheerios box or whatever when things make a right angle, that means that their slopes should be negative reciprocal slopes. In other words, if one's positive, the other's negative. If one's going up, the other has to be going down so that they make that right angle. The other thing is if one of them is shallow, the other one has to be steep. That's how we make it, this happen. We end up with one fifth is a very small number. Five firsts is a pretty big number. They're on opposite sides of one when you think about things in terms of multiplication. In fact, when you multiply them, they make one. That's what reciprocals do. They multiply to make one. That would be another definition of reciprocals. Let's try it sometime. 23 over 2 multiplied by 2 over 23. It'll make one. No matter what the two numbers are on top and bottom, if you flip them and you multiply, you're going to end up with one. All called the multiplicative, oh, it's not called the multiplicative identity. They're called multiplicative inverses. Okay, so in this particular problem, notice these numbers are not the same. These numbers don't even matter. What matters is that one of these guys is a negative three, and the other guy is a one-third. And negative three is the same as negative three over one. And one-third is one over three. Notice one is positive, the other is negative. One is right side up, the other is upside down. That's all it takes. 
to make perpendicular slopes ever. You can take any fraction with two slopes and do that. I could take 12 over one and negative one over 12. And they will make a right angle, purple and orange line. I could take, oh, 11. Now it's 12 over 11. So I need negative 11 over 12. And they'll make a right angle. It doesn't matter what these, this number is, as long as the other one is the opposite sign, so one's positive and the other's negative, and they're flipped fractions of each other, you're going to be have two lines that are perpendicular, always. That's important to remember next year when you have um, geometry. You will do that because in geometry, sometimes you want to have parallel lines or perpendicular lines. Like say you're graphing a square. That would be an interesting example to try to do. How could I make this into a square? Like make two more lines and make a perfect square. It'd be a good thing to try out if you're ever bored. Okay, so when m is original, uh, so m of the original line is the slope is 2, and I want a parallel line, then the slope has to be 2. These are kind of badly worded questions, so I'm just going to go with it. If m over my original line is 1 half, then the parallel line is 1 half, because they have to have the same slope to be parallel. So if I want two lines that are parallel, m has to be the same. Two and two, one half and one half. If I have m as the original line and I want a perpendicular line, now it's not going to be the same number. Instead of two, I have one, negative one half. That's because this is two over one, positive two over one, negative one over two. That's how perpendicular lines are formed. If I have this one, notice this is Positive 1 over 2, negative 2 over 1. It flips and turns negative. That's how you make perpendicular lines. None of this involves the second number. We have ignored the second number the entire time. All we've been dealing with is this, because this guy right here, the slope, is the one that keeps track of how steep the line is. The second number here keeps track of where, how high up or how down low the line is. Notice, if I have... I'll get rid of one of these guys. Now I've got this guy, right? Notice he crosses at 5 on the y-axis because this is a 5. If I change this to a 4, hey, look at that. Now he crosses at 4. My y-intercept. If he crosses at 3, he crosses at 3. So whatever this number is, that's where my line is going to cross here. So I can change the first number to make it steeper or less steep or even less steep. Oops even less steep. This number, these numbers make it, depending on the size of this fraction or this number, makes it steeper or not as steep. If I want to make it go down, I can make it be negative slope. But none of that affects where it crosses here. All of those have the same crossing point. And that's just decided by this. Okay. All right. So, that's how we're going to get these. I want you to try to answer this on your own. Take a moment and read the question. It says the line crosses the y-axis at y equals 5. Okay. It crosses at y equals 5. That's the y-axis at 5. So we want it to cross at 5. And then it also is parallel to this guy right here. So how can I make a line parallel to this? So I'm going to type in 4x plus 3. y equals 4x plus 3. So that's the line I want to be parallel to. How will I make something that crosses 5 and is parallel to this? So I want a line that goes like this. Well, notice, if I want a parallel line, I want to make... I'm going to type it in here. I'm going to start with my formula, y equals mx plus b. That's my first thing. I gotta start with my formula. Okay, so now I know the steepness has to be parallel to this steepness, right? If they're parallel, then they have to have the same slope. We learned that. So I need to have something where m, my slope, my steepness, is 4. Try that. Y equals 4x plus b. 
y equals 4x plus b. Okay, and we're adding a slider for b. So now let's see where we are at. See, this line right here, it's parallel. This black, green, black line right here. It's parallel because it has the same slope. However, I can scoot it up or down to be wherever I want by changing b to be negative 10. Now it crosses way down here at negative 10. Or I could make b b negative 7, 6, 5, 4, 3. Well, if I want to cross at 5, I should make this into a 5. That's all. Take a look and see if, yep, look at that. It crosses at 5. If I want it to cross at something else, I should type that number here. And that's all there is to it. Oops, let me just put in my computer because it's going to. This may have to be two videos. All right. There. Um, so, y equals 4x plus 5 will also, y intercept of 5. And that's how we do it. That's my answer. It's right here. So see if you can do the next one. This one has to be perpendicular to the line and go through five. I'm gonna do this one fast in five, four, three, two. Here we go, pause if you need the time. So I'm also still gonna start with my y equals mx plus b. I'm going to add my, well, instead of four x, I want this to be a perpendicular slope, right? So this is four over one. That is perpend, by the way, this is the international sign for perpendicular. It is perpendicular to negative one over four. You'll learn that sign in geometry next year. It's not important that you know that. All right, so I'm gonna make sure that my new slope is negative one over four. I'm gonna type that with parentheses because I think it's more clear. Um, if you don't put parentheses there, it looks like the x is on the bottom of the fraction with the 4. And I don't want the x to be on the bottom of the fraction. I just want it to be its own number being multiplied by negative 1 fourth. So parentheses around the 1 fourth to make sure it's clear. Is perpendicular. Now I just need to make sure it crosses at 5. My new line. Okay, well, just like the other one, this is the steepness. That's where it crosses the y-axis. So all I need to do is make sure that the second number is 5. y equals negative 1 fourth x plus 5. Boom. Did it. Also, as will also. We'll also have a y-intercept of 5. So that's our answer. Let's go ahead and type that one in there and see what it looks like. All right, negative 1 fourth x plus 5. Negative 1 fourth x plus 5. Look at that. This one crosses the red one at a right angle now. And it still goes through the y-axis at 5 right there. So it worked. My black line is perpendicular and up to this guy, and it crosses the y-axis at 5. Wonderful. Okay, and I believe we stopped pretty close to here. These graphs are pretty um, unclear because they don't have numbers. I'm going to imagine, okay? I'm going to imagine that this crosses at 1. And it goes over, oh, I don't know. It's going to go... over four and up one. We'll just kind of eyeball it, okay? Now this one over here, let's just say five, six. I'm gonna pretend it crosses at six. 
Now, the things I'm doing right now are just completely arbitrary. Honestly, there are a million different answers for this, and I would accept just about anything. Uh, I'll tell you what could be wrong. We'll say that this one goes over 3 and down 2. I don't know. Sound about right. It's just eyeballing, so we're going to be all right. And down 2, so I'm going to put a negative here. Okay, that's just me making it up. I'm adding numbers. You could add your own numbers. You could count with smaller or larger steps. You could think, oh, I think that's more like five and up one. That's up to you. So, and we did this, some of this in class, so you might have already have an answer written. The one on the left, the one on the left, what is a function rule for it? Well, we already added some lines here to kind of get an idea of what's going on. We know that it crosses here at one, oops, at one right here. Why? Because I assume that that's a 1. And it goes over 4 for every 1 it goes up. Remember, change in y, that's the up, divided by change in x. That's up or down, divided by distance to the right. That is always how we find our slope. Okay, so that's, what's that going to be? Well, that's going to be one up and four over as my slope. Next, I know that it crosses at one here. So one is the y intercept. Now I added these numbers. Again, if you came up with different numbers that you liked more, great. All right, so that means One fourth x. I'm going to put parentheses around that one as well. If you don't put parentheses around it, it's technically all right. It's just a very easy mistake to make. So I prefer parentheses around fractions in front of an x if you're typing. Okay? Because this, yeah, it's hard to tell the difference between 1 over 4 x and 1 over 4 x, if you don't use parentheses. These are not the same thing, okay? One is not the same as the other. If the x is up here, that means it's not on the bottom of the fraction. So I like to do this to show it's not on the bottom of the fraction. This is the one we want, not that one. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay, but you don't need to write that down. That's kind of meaningless. It's just explanation. All right. Keep typing, Joel. Keep typing. Almost there. 1 equals 4x, or 1 fourth x plus, and it crossed at 1. Let's look at this one. This one crosses at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. It goes over 3 and down 2. Think about what you would do. I'm going to type in the answer right now. You should go through all these steps. Here's what you should get. Pause if you need more time. y equals... Negative two thirds x plus six crosses at six, goes down two and up over three. Down two over three crosses at six. If you know what to look for, you can write any line this way, just like that. Did I do show any work? No, I didn't, because I've done this a million times, and I know that this tells me the steepness. That tells me where the line crosses. Done. Okay. All right. I'm going to stop there, and we're going to come back and finish. Bye-bye. Okay, so we started, we did this, and I'm finishing. Um, we're at page number four of five. Reinforce, write, and graph. Three different function rules that share a common y-intercept. Okay, so what that means is, remember, we always have y equals mx plus b. m equals slope, the steepness of the line. And actually, you know what? I'm just going to put this here. It's fine. I'll come in. Um, and b equals y-intercept. 
always, always in this form, always. So if they want us to have different, the same y-intercept but have different slopes, that means, so m be different because it says different slopes. And b should be the same. And they'll have the same y-intercept, but different slopes. That's what share a common, right? So we got this, and let me make absolutely sure. This is very clear. Same y-intercept. That's this. And then different slopes. That's this. So let's do that. Let's just randomly pick some numbers. Let's go with y equals 3 x plus 2. I'm going to pick small numbers so it fits on this graph as well. So I'm not going to put in 300 and 2,000 because I don't really want to bother with graphing that. So we're doing with 3x plus 2. The m's should be different. The b should be the same. So down here for my next one, I should have y equals something x plus 2. That's all. Should we make it b? Let's make it be negative 2x. All right, so now the m is different. The b is the same, just like we said. And the last one we'll do, oh, let's make y equals 0x plus 2. All right, so those are our three things. I made the x, the number before the x be different, the m be different. And I made the other number be the same. The b is the same for all of these. Now, if I put these in, let me type them all into here. y equals 2, no, 3x plus 2. That's one of them. Next one was y equals negative 2x plus 2. Now, you don't have to do these ones, just for the record. The last one was y equals 0x plus 2. All right, so here are my two graphs over here. You can see they all cross at 2. That's the y-intercept. That's this number. But they all go different directions. Y, X, oh, the orange, red one goes up and to the right. It has a positive slope of 3. So for every one it goes over, it goes up 3. The second one, the purple one, has a slope of negative 2. So it's going down as it goes to the right. It goes over down two and over one, down two and over one, down two. And the last one goes up or down, nothing. In fact, watch this. I can just take, get rid of the zero x entirely because really this is just all the places where x equals two, or sorry, y equals two. So if I say zero x, it doesn't really affect anything. It's just right there, zero x plus two because I'm adding nothing. Whatever x is, it turns to nothing when it multiplies by zero. Okay, so let's craft those things. I'm going to try to do this fast without talking too much. Well, maybe I'll do it while I'm talking, because I like to talk. It's my last video, after all. So we got this. We got that. I'm going to copy and paste this guy, this guy. No, I don't want to copy all of that. There we are. Control-C, Control-V. There we are, and control V. There we are. Now, we can make a table. You can always make yourself a table. I'll make one table just because I like wasting time, I guess. Control, shift, push it. I push shift, it makes the line straight. X. Why I can do this and say, okay, well, that means that this, if x is uh, negative 1, then I would plug in a negative 1. Negative 1 times 3 is negative 3, plus 2 is a negative 1. 
And then if I plug in a zero, for x, I get three times zero is zero, plus two is two. Oops, what did I just do there? I accidentally was in the wrong spot here. I plug in a zero, I get out for y, two. You can do this math yourself and notice that if I plug turn x to zero, the only thing y can be so that these are equal is two. So that's why x is zero and y is two. No other numbers will work that way. Um, there are the pairs of numbers, but if x is zero, there's only one thing y can be if that's going to be equal. And so y has to be two. And then one, if x is one, y ends up having to be five. Because you end up with this makes five, so y must equal five. All right. Okay, so let's graph those points. We're going to graph them in black, because why not? We'll graph them larger so you can see the points. When we graph them, negative 1, negative 1 is right here. 0, 2 is right here. Ugh. And then 1, 5 is right here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Like so. And I'm going to turn it back to um, 2. We can... Go ahead and graph that thing. There it is. All right. You can put arrows on the ends. That's technically the right way to do it because technically this line goes forever and it keeps track of all of these numbers. That's what it's for. It keeps track of all of those pairs that I have to make <laughs> that fit this rule. Okay. So that's our first answer. And it looks like this. Our next one, I'm not going to do all of this. Remember, we learned a shortcut. I know it starts here and it has this steepness. So instead, I'm just going to skip making a, um, a, a table. And I'm going to know that it starts at 2, on 2 on the y-axis. It goes over 1 and down 2. Why? Because this is negative 2. If I go the other way, it's going to go up 2. I can see that this line goes like this. Um, if you're doing this and you have the time, it is a good idea to go to the far ends. Otherwise, you might get a line that's not perfectly straight. Just to avoid eyeing things too much. But I don't mark you down for things like that. Okay, so now they're all in a row. This passes through two. goes over one and down two. We have our line. Just go ahead and do this because might as well. Two over one. Negative two over one. All right. So that's how we got our slope, just so you understand. And this one, it doesn't go up or down. This just goes away. It doesn't do anything. So this is just places where y equals two. And all the places where y equal 2, right there, it crosses through 2, it doesn't go up, it doesn't go down. When the slope is 0, it's horizontal. You learn that. Okay, I'm going faster, faster, faster. Write a paragraph describing the relationship between the steepness of each of your lines in question 16 and the associated values of m in each function. We talked about this a little bit. Now, you could use different lines just for the record, right? Um, so, the first line has a slope of 3 and a y-intercept of 2. Didn't spell that quite right. There. The second line has a slope of negative 2 and a y-intercept of 2. The third line has a slope of 0 and a y-intercept 
said negative two. I know I had two there. Sorry, that's a reasonable mistake. Okay. Column two is replace M and B with the appropriate number in the formula within the formula. Ugh. It's not behaving. Don't do that to me. Okay. Within the formula, y equals mx plus b. That's what it is. That's all. Okay. Choose one function, one of the function rules you wrote. Question. Write another function rule that would have a graph that is parallel to the graph of the one you chose. Just to find words how you know that they will be parallel. Okay. Let's choose the first one. Okay, so I'm going to choose the first one. I'm going to write it down here. Our first, the first line was y equals 3x plus 2. No. Parallel lines have the same slope. So, I want you to think about that. That's the rule. Parallel lines have the same slope. We wrote it a while back. So, which one of these is the slope? Three or two? Well, we wrote that up here. Three is the slope. M is the slope. So, I just have to make another line with that the same, but the other number the same. I need a line with the same slope. A different intercept. Like, well, we could do y equals same slope 3x. We just have to add any other number plus 12 or plus 5 or minus 3. As long as the intercept is a different number. Are going to be two different lines that have the same slope, they're going to be parallel. That's all. Okay, write three function rules that would be have the graphs that are perpendicular to the graphs of three function rules in 16. Okay, let's talk about that. Here's these guys, right? Oof, this one's going to be interesting. Well, you'll learn something. Our first one, second one, and third one. So, Let's write our lines and then make the perpendicular lines and call it good. The first line was y equals 3x plus 2. Remember a perpendicular slope. That means the perpendicular slope to 3 is Remember, it has to be 3 like that, right? 3 over 1, which is just 3, is 1 third, but it also has to be negative. Okay? So that means oops, that means that our Perpendicular line y equals. I have to make sure that this negative one third is in there. I'll maybe I'll just write this negative one third so it's clear. Negative negative one third. Negative one third now, it doesn't really matter what the intercept is because it's perpendicular. So I could say plus two or plus five or plus anything. 
or just maybe negative one third x. That would be perfectly okay as long as you have a slope. B plus zero, I'm gonna say minus three. Okay, the second line. Okay. Perpendicular line. This is, let's think about that. So I need to take this negative two. Negative two over one is perpendicular. What I need to do is flip them. And if one is negative, the other has to be positive. So this one's got to be positive. So I'm going to end up with y, oops, y equals positive one half, one half x plus two. I'm going to go ahead and erase that one half and write it just like the other one. I think it's easier to see what's going on with the fraction when it's written this way. You can see that this x is not being multiplied by the 2, it's being multiplied by 1 half. Okay? All right, and the last one. The third line. Now this one, I don't think we learned how to do this. So this is going to be fun. Um, is y equals 0x plus 2 which is technically okay. Now, technically, this has a different name. Just so you know, this is called a constant function. Because it doesn't change. It's always two. Y equals two if X is five. Y equals two if X is 10. Y equals two. It doesn't really matter. Um, so, if I want to make a vertical line, I just have to pick what x equals. Okay, so if I type that in here, watch this. Okay, let me erase these two. Oops. So we had y equals 0x plus 2. Stuff like that. So it's perfectly across. Notice the 0x doesn't matter. It doesn't affect anything. So technically, that's just y equals 2. Okay? Um, the other thing we can do is... X. Well, if I do x equals 3, that's going to be all the line spots where x equals 3. Like 3, 0, and 3, 2, and 3, 4, and 3, 6, and 3, negative 2. All of the points where the first number is 3. So that will make a perfectly perpendicular line. Um, those are weird ones, and they're good to know. All the points. X is three. Like three zero, three six, three 
three negative one hundred and two point five six four. It doesn't matter. As long as the first number is three, it's going to be going straight up and down. It's never going to move right or left because the first number is three. And that keeps track of the rights and the lefts on a graph. Okay, so what are my answers? They are, oops, I didn't want to do that. I might as well make those be black. I'm going to circle these guys. This last one is just because I chose to do something with 0x. Usually, there's a number other than 0 here. Um, so usually it works out better. Okay, but we're going to roll with it. And that is the entire assignment. Good luck in the future. You've got this. I believe in you.